Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my solution using Forbenius method to this differential equation here. And I'm after noticing while I cleaned up my board that I had a bit of a typo at the very last line. So just to recap again, right? This is my initial equation. At the very end of my initial, equ initial equation I put in a term which shouldn't have been there. Namely, in the last video I had a n minus 1. And I just put that in there by mistake. So just to read them out. My first equation which makes my recurrence relation reads a n plus 1 times n plus r plus 1 times n plus r plus 2 a n plus 1 times n plus r plus 1 plus a n minus 1. This one reads a 0 times r times r minus 1 times x to the r minus 1 plus a 1 r r plus 1 x to the r 2 a 0 r x to the r minus 1 and 2 a 1 r plus 1 x to the r. So what we're going to do here is use our initial equation which is number 2 to get our values for r. Then we'll get our recurrence relation from equation 1, plug our values for r into it and solve. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So go for question, or excuse me, equation 2. Now if I take out just, in, just, for, the, just for the crack x to the r negative 1, what will I get as a result of that? I'm going to get a0 times r, r minus 1. I'm going to get plus 2a0, r, x to the r minus 1. Oh, take that out there, and that's all I'm going to get there. Right? And if I take out x to the r, I'll get a1, r, r plus 1, and 2, a1, r plus 1. Alright? Now what you do here is you set both of those to 0. Alright? Set them both to 0. And there, that, that's going to get a bit messy. So set both of those to 0 to get your values for r. Okay? So if you use this equation here, we're going to get the following. You're going to get that r becomes 0 and r is equal to negative 1. And here r is equal to negative 1 and r is equal to negative 2. So it seems that we have three different values for this, and that is true. So we can say that r is equal to negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Now here, a small theorem, which uh, I'm not going to prove, comes in handy. It says that where the indices are separated by an integer, they're all basically the same. All right? It means that there's actually only going to be one solution. So you take any one of these, take the easiest one. So I'll say that once more whereby all your, or your indices are separated by an integer, then in actual fact they will not give you linearly independent solutions. And as a result, take the easiest one of these three and continue on. Alright? So, what are we going to do here? Let me see now what one I took. Um, yeah, I'm going to take r is equal to zero. That's what I'm going to do. So, I'm just going to get rid of all this here. Alright? And there's no, re no need for this equation anymore, so get rid of that. What I'm going to say from now on is that r is equal to 0, because that's just the easiest one. That will kill more terms than any other uh, value of r. So now we need to get our recurrence relation. And how do we do that? Well, we just solve this by setting it equal to 0. And we're going to get the following. It's going to, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to factorize it straight out. I'm going to get a n plus 1 outside of the following n squared plus nr plus nr plus r squared plus n plus r plus 2n plus 2r plus 2 <laughs> is equal to a n minus 1, well, negative a n minus 1. All right? Look, there's no point in me doing all this just, just for you. Like, you, know, you can do that yourself. It's pretty straightforward algebra. And as a result of that, just doing a small bit of more manipulation and being quite careful, you're going to get that a n minus 1 becomes, or a n plus 1, excuse me, becomes negative a n minus 1 over n plus r to be squared plus 3 times n plus r plus 2. Now you might say to yourself that you're, you didn't get, we we'll say, the same answer, or your answer mightn't look the same. And to be quite honest, that does not matter. All that matters is that the answer, or you know, the output of, of whatever equation you have is the same. And you've got to remember anyway that we're going to be killing r, so we're going to be setting r to 0, so it doesn't really matter. 
and this is going to be a recurrence relation. All right. So just be careful with your algebra, and if you don't want to manipulate it to look like this, well, that's no problem. That's not a big deal at all at all. Okay, so let's plug in the value of r is equal to 0, and we're going to get that a n plus 1 becomes negative a n minus 1 over n squared plus 3 n plus 2. That's our recurrence relation for n is equal to zero for r is equal to zero, and also it'll give us a linearly dependent solution for the other for the other two values. So it's the only one we need to use. And what do we do from here? Well, we start plugging in values for for n into this equation. So bear with me now, and I'll just clean up this whole thing again. All right. So let's plug in our values into our recurrence relation. I just said that a n plus 1 is equal to negative a n minus 1 over n squared plus 3 n plus 2. So this, I, you know, I'm going to be move pretty quickly through here because there's no need to, uh, to really bog down on it. So where n is equal to 1, we're going to get the following. We're going to get that a2 is equal to negative a0 over 6. Okay? Where n is equal to 2, we're going to get, just with a bit of manipulation, we're going to get that negative a1 over 4 times 3. Alright? This is 3 times 2, by the way. Which is 3 factorial. And uh, what else can we put in here? If we have n is equal to 3, we're going to get that a4 is equal to a0 over 5 factorial. Where n is equal to 4, we're going to get that a1 over 6 factorial is equal to a5. Alright, so you're starting to see a bit of a pattern. We're seeing these factorials pop up left, right and center. But we know, of course, uh, that this is the only solution. We cannot get uh, another solution from our other indices. So basically, this is y general. Alright, but it's also, if you look at it, we see two patterns. We see an a0 pattern and an a1 pattern. So some of it is odd and some of it is even. So you could say that y general is equal to y odd plus y even. You could break it down like that if you like. It's not very important that you do it, but if you like, and if you see it, why not do it? All right, so as a result, I'm going to show you what they are. Okay, so we have to remember, of course, from the start we defined y is equal to the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n plus r. We also know that we've defined r as equal to 0. So we get rid of that straight out. So just x to the n. All right. Um, yeah, x to the n. That's fine. So what do we do from here on? Well, we're after getting all the values for our a n's. And we need to find out a general way of writing our a n's. So uh, how do we do that? Well. Look at the following. These two things might be of a, a bit of assistance. First of all, 2n plus 1. For all values of n, what will that give you? For all values of n, this will give you an odd number. And what will 2n give you? For all values of n, this will give you an even number. So where you're looking to divide by factorials, we have, we'll say, odd and even factorials. So to get an odd number, you would put in 2n plus 1 factorial. And to get an even number, you'd put in 2n factorial. All right, they will all give you, they will always work. So as a result, we're going to get the following. I'm going to say that y of x even is equal to a0 outside of the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n times x to the x to the uh, 2n, no, excuse me there, outside of 2n plus 1 factorial. And I'm going to say that y of x odd is equal to a1 outside of the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 that's over, excuse me, 2n factorial. All right, to be honest, getting it in this particular form is not a big deal. Uh, once you get it, once you get it to here, you're you're doing pretty well. All right. Now I, I do I do admit that there might be a small typo in there somewhere. Okay, because I often do that. But the method is the only thing that's really important, because computers are the ones really that solve these things. Okay. 
So you should really be kind of struggling, not struggling, you should be um, yeah, struggling as hard as you can in order to understand the method. Where you understand the method, then you should be confident because the method is the only thing that really applies. And in, in real life, we'll say it would be a computer solving these for you. So thanks for watching. I hope that helps. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.